Today, we're going to be talking about how to share and save files through Robot Studio and the Flex Pendant. We're first going to start with the Flex Pendant, which is typically done on online systems. To show you in this, we're going to do this through the Robot Studio tab, through the Virtual Flex Pendant. So we're going to go on to the Controller tab. Under the Controller Tools, we're going to hit the Flex Pendant drop-down arrow and hit IRC5 Flex Pendant. Now that we have the Flex Pendant open, we're going to show you how to save programs, modules, and backups. First, we're going to start with saving a module. To do that, we're going to go into what is known as our program editor. So we hit the drop down menu, hit program editor, and it gives you options to open and look at the tasks and programs, the modules, and the routines. We're going to open the modules function, and it's going to see the list of modules that we have in our system. We want to save a particular module. We can select it. I'm going to select program one. We're going to file and save module as. And then it's going to point you to the directory that you want to save this module to. If you're on Robot Studio, you will see that it's pointing to my hard drive on my computer. If you were on a a real system, it's going to go to the hard drive on the controller. So for this one, we can just select where we want to save it. If you look down here, it's got a, a new folder tab with an asterisk next to it, so you can create a new folder to save it. An up menu that scrolls up um, into the directory, so if I click onto that, you're going to see it's going to go up in the folder files where I can go higher and higher until I select, select the final drive it's looking at. Or I can go to the Home tab, which uh, go, takes you back to the home page for the saving and the loading. So you can name it whatever you want down here. If you click on these three little period buttons, you can rename your module if you want to using the screen. Hit OK. And then once you once you got it where you want it, you hit OK and it, hits, it saves it. So I'm not going to say we're going to hit Cancel. Hit Back. So now that we've learned how to save modules, then we're going to see what it looks like to um, save a task in a program. If we open that up, we only have one task running in this virtual system. And you can say file, you can create a new program, load a program, or save a program, rename it, or delete it. So we can save that program out, and again, it's going to point us to that same style of directory and save it out as a program file. So we know where we can save modules. We know where we can save programs. Now we're going to see the most common style of saving and loading on a real system, and that's referring to backups. We have to go to a, a, a new tab, so we're going to close out this um, program editor tab, drop down, and we're going to go to backup and restore. When you hit that tab, you're going to see two options, either backup the current system or restore a system from a previous backup. When you backup a program, it's going to contain program and system files that make the controller run. And you can do that at, at any time um, for the system. And then if you hit the restore system, it's going to ask you to point to a backup you've saved. If you're wanting to restore a backup, you want to make sure that the backup is current and doesn't have any issues in it before you load it. Right now we're focused on saving, so saving the backup. So we're going to hit this first one to back up the current system. It's going to give you an option to rename the backup. Typically what I do when I name backups is I give it a system descri description. For this one, it's Thane Test 1. 
and then underscore backup to let people know that it's a backup that we're saving. And then it automatically populates with a date stamp. I'm going to continue and actually I would rename it with a timestamp. Right now it's 8.26 p.m. So using military time, I would write down 2027. So that way I know the date and the time and a quick system description so I know everything there is to, that needs to be known if I'm to save this and load it in a future date. And then you'd hit OK and it would save the backup for you. So you can rename the backup. You can change where the backup is being saved. Again, your folder menu options are presented here once you click on that screen. And then it at the bottom it shows you the file path directory and the backup name just to confirm that's what you want to do. Then you can hit create backup and it will create the backup. Now that we've shown you how to create backups and shave modules and programs, we're now going to do it in Robot Studio. To do that, we're going to go under the controller tab, and you're going to see under our station tree in the controller tab, there's a rapid option. When you, when you click the menu arrow there, it's going to show you the task and the program. If you, go, if you click, down click on that arrow, it's going to show you the programs that are in there, the modules, program modules. So we're going to first show you how to save a module. You're just going to right click on it and save module as, and it's going to show you the file. If you want to name it something different, you can name it under a specific name, I would suggest that you keep the module name and this name the same, so that saving and loading doesn't get confusing to you or the computer when it's looking for it. And it shows you where, uh, what location you wanna save it under. For a program, all you have to do is right click on the program and say save program as. And when you go into that, you can direct where you want to save that at. And it's going to save it, that program file, under a folder. So once you hit save, it's going to save that TROB1 folder, that program file, under a full directory, folder directory. So to save a backup on the virtual station, rather than go to the flex pendant, you can go to backup. You create the backup. You can name the backup. You still have the option to back up to an arch archive file. And you can also manually direct it to whatever file directory you want to. And you would hit OK and it would back up that current system. So we know how to save modules. We know how to save programs and we know how to save backups. I save, when, we're, when I'm doing a lot of heavy coding work, I'm working on a specific module, that's when I do a lot of saving and loading of modules, and also I tend to save and load modules onto a USB drive if I'm going between a desktop computer and the real station if I'm not directly connected to them through an online port. I usually save out program files on the first creation of a major controller upgrade or if I have to do a program start or what they call a p-start, I would load that program file out so that when it reboots I don't have to manually load each module in. I can just load in the program file and it populates the program file with all the programs that have been created. For backups, I typically try to save backups of the system on a daily basis, if not two times a day. If I'm doing major, major coding revisions or doing a lot of work on that robot cell, um, as far as programming is considered, or updating, I will save backups more often. That way, if the system crashes 
or I screw up in loading the wrong file path or the robot flakes out, I can restore a backup that I know is working and functional. Now that we've learned how to save backups, programs, and modules, we're going to show some saving methods that are specific to Robot Studio. There are two things that are common to do when you save and load in Robot Studio. The first one is to save out the station. That can be simply done by hitting Control S, and it saves the station. When you save the station, it saves whatever you're currently working on in its current state in a specified file path that's already been saved. You can also save a station from going to the, making sure you're on the home tab and saying file, save station as. And you can save it under the name you want and the directory you want it to save under. I usually save stations out every 10 to 15 minutes as I'm working in Robot Studio. That way, as if I save and save often, I don't lose hours of work if Robot Studio decides to crash, which believe me, it does happen more than I care to admit. One other way to save out a Robot Studio station where you can save the entire package is as what we call a pack and go. To do that, you hit the file tab, hit share, and select the first option called pack and go. With a pack and go, it's going to save an entire package of the active station you're in. That includes virtual controllers, libraries, robotware, any geometry or tools. Everything's going to be saved in one one single file location. When that happens, then you're able to share that with other people on other desktops and laptops. They don't have to manually try to find all these individual components. You don't have to save out individual components that someone else has to create a file path directory that the system recognizes to load and use your system with a pack and go. If the system's working on your station, if everything is loaded right and they have the right software loaded on, you should be able to create a pack and go and then open it on another computer and it should be up and running once it all gets unloaded and you don't have to worry about file path directories. When you, when you go to the pack and go wizard, it's going to point you to where you want to save it and what name you want to save it under. So if you clicked on that browsing deal, you can rename it and point to directory you want it to. Once you do that, it's going to pack up your libraries, create your backups, pack your virtual controllers, and save that out. Now, if you were a user and you wanted to go through and actually create and use a pack and go that someone has given you, you go to the file tab again, hit share, go to unpack and work. It opens you up to this wizard. You're going to hit next. You're going to select the pack and go that you want to save. Then you're going to hit the target folder where you want it put. Just going to create a new folder. I'm going to hit next on that. You just want to look, you can either load the files from a local PC or load files from the pack and go. We're going to stick with what's loaded in the pack and go. 
You're going to make sure your robotware version matches. We're using 6.101, so everything is matching up right there. We hit next. It shows you the file to unpack, the destination, where it's going, that you're loading the files, all the files from the pack and go, and that you're using the robotware. And we checked that it matched, so we should be good to go. And now it's creating those virtual controllers and unpacking that station so you can use it. Now that the unpacking work is finished, we can hit close. And now we're just going to wait for the controllers to boot up. Our controllers have started and are now working. There's no errors in the system. We're ready to use this system. So this is how saving and loading is done within Robot Studio and on a real system. Thank you for watching, guys.